everyone, my name is Michael. Welcome to the YouTube channel for the Michael Papinchak Show, my podcast, which can be found at tmpspodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Uh, we talk about a lot of things on my show, and my co-host Jason and I, one of our major topics is watches. We both are huge watch enthusiasts. I here have 49 watches. It's a little excessive, I know, but over the past 20, 25, 30 years, I've collected a lot of different watches, all the way from $14 to $14,000. Some work, some don't, some are really old, some are brand new, and I thought I'd go over my entire collection with you, and there's a little surprise at the end. So why don't we get started? Um, I'm going to start with two watches that I never plan on wearing. These are watches that I bought for display purposes only. I am a huge Darth Vader fan, and I got an email from Invicta that they have a whole bunch of different Star Wars watches. So I got this. It was on sale pretty cheap, like 60 bucks, on a super discount. So this is in my Star Wars display down in my kind of game uh, game room, family, you know, like TV room. I have a whole bunch of Darth Vader stuff. So that hangs out down there. It has a little, I bought a little display thing for it. Just sits in the display case. I'm also a huge Superman fan. And my podcast studio has a bunch of Superman stuff. So again, Invicta, a watch I never plan on wearing. I mean, I don't know who would actually wear this. I really think it's for, you know, uh, collection purposes only. And it just sits with all my other uh, Superman stuff. And again, I bought that same little display thing for it. Right next to these, again, I uh, saw online that the current Pope, Pope Francis, was wearing, what is it, that Tiffany Patek or something like that, which is just totally against what this Pope is all about. So I wanted, as a Catholic, I wanted to figure out what watch does the Pope actually wear? And it's this very, very inexpensive, I think $16, I got it on Amazon, Casio. Very simple, very, very simple. I, I, like I said, I think it was 16 bucks. And I thought, for 16 bucks, I want to have the watch that the current Pope wears. So there it is. Let's go over here quick. Like I said, some of these watches are cheap uh, and don't work. This one is actually broken. You can see there somehow this broke. This is a Michael Kors. I have a few Michael Kors watches back when I was younger and I couldn't afford major timepieces. I'd buy these Michael Kors watches, I think for like 200, 250, something like that. I have a few of them. I think they're great watches. I mean, they, they, they look good, but they're designer watches. And if you have three to 400 bucks, don't buy a designer watch. Don't buy Michael Kors, Gucci, Versace. Go and get something that's actually a watch company. Something that people who like horology, like I do, will uh, respect. Don't buy um, a, a designer watch. But back then, I didn't care. I just wanted watches. So this one doesn't work. It needs a new battery. But as you can see, uh, it's all broken and stuff. Not worth fixing. Not worth getting a battery in. Oop, see, it, it just fell apart. Ugh. Put that back in there. Now, this is a Kenneth Cole, another designer watch. Does not work. But when I used to wear this, I used to get so many compliments on it. People love this beautiful blue dial. Very, very thin. Look, look, look how thin. Look at that. It's barely there. It disappears. <clears throat> I like this watch. Sorry, I have, <clears throat> I've had COVID. I've been in quarantine for a bit. I'm bored and really wanted to make this video because I've just been hanging out. So if my voice goes in and out, I apologize. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I used to get a lot of compliments on this watch. It does not work. I have so many other watches now that getting a battery in it probably just wouldn't be worth it because I have so many other options. But I used to love wearing this. Ton of compliments on it. All right, so let's go to this here. I have this cool, I don't know if you, yeah, so see here. I wonder if I can lift it up. I got this off Amazon. Holds four watches. Then I have some jewelry. I'm in there. Let's take a look at what's on here. Remember when I said if you have three to four hundred bucks, don't buy a Michael Kors. 
go on teddybaldazar.com and get a Tiso PRX. Now, this is the quartz version. They have a automatic movement version. I'm a huge fan of the Genta designs. My holy grail watch is the 5711 Nautilus. And this is kind of like the $400 version, like to hold me over until I can actually get a Nautilus one day. Tiso PRX, I, I had to get it, teddybaldazar.com. Beautiful watch. Again, this blue dial, I'm a sucker for a blue dials. Why would I get this Kenneth Cole fixed and get a new battery in it when I can just wear the Tissot PRX? Next to that is the Arnie Seiko Diver's Watch. This is called the Arnie because back in the 80s, the original version of this watch, Arnold Schwarzenegger wore in at least, I think, two to three movies, if not more. But I love the fact that watches have nicknames. And when I found out that there was a watch called the Arnie, I had to have it. I don't remember where I got this from. I might have got it from Teddy. I don't remember. Or Amazon. I don't remember where I actually got it from. But it is the... Um, it is the it is solar powered. It's a solar powered di diver's watch. Really, really cool. It's the Arnie. Love it. Just absolutely love it. Next to that is an older Tissot PRX. I bought this watch because I lived in Europe for three months. I was in Italy. And I didn't want to take a super nice watch that I had. I wanted to take a watch that if I broke it, lost it, scratched it up, it got stolen in Europe, traveling, all that stuff, I wouldn't really care. I don't remember how much it cost, but I bought it in New York City. I was living in New York City. I'm at the time at the, what's it called? True Nose store, something like, like that. And uh, it's an older uh, chronograph TSO PRX. I, I wear it occasionally. I consider it like a beater watch, but it, but it survived Italy. And I'll never get, get rid of it because it reminds me of my time living in Italy for three months. Next to that is what's called a Sector. I fell in love with watches when I went to Switzerland and I was a kid and I was like, mommy, mommy, I really want a watch from Switzerland. So I got this sector. My mom bought it for me in Switzerland. I don't know much about sectors. I don't even know if they still sell sectors. I really don't know, know anything about them, but I didn't want to leave Switzerland without buying a watch. I don't even know if it's Swiss made. doesn't matter. My whole idea was, I'm in Switzerland, I want to have a watch when I leave. So that's what this sector is. You'll notice in my collection, I'm a huge fan of chronographs. I like big dials. I like, I, I just, I'm a huge fan. I, I have a larger wrist. I need a watch that, you know, kind of covers a lot of surface area. And so this is a sector that I got when I was in Switzerland. All right, so those are, are those four. Let's go in, in the drawer. I have two things here full of watches in the drawer. So this watch I bought, my name's Michael, right? I bought this cheap watch literally because on the website it was, it was referred to as Big Mike. I don't remember how much it cost. It is not expensive. It is nothing special. I literally was buying another watch and as I was scrolling through, this one was called Big Mike, and I just had to buy it. Nothing of any consequence. I don't even know. It's a Smail, S-M-A-E-L. Not even sure what it is, but I had to have it. Also, I had to have this, the Elvis watch, the Hamilton Ventura. Have not actually worn it out of the house. Not really my style, but again, I wanted something unique. The Elvis, such a cool look. I think it's great for anyone's collection. At first, I didn't think it fit my wrist. I just didn't pull the butterfly clasp open enough, but it, it does fit. Gorgeous watch, very unique. Maybe one day I'll wear it. I don't wear a lot of black. Well, I'm wearing black right now, but these are like gym clothes. I don't wear a lot of black outside of the house, and I believe if you're wearing brown shoes, a brown belt, your strap needs to be brown if it's leather. I do believe in that, and this is black, and I don't wear a lot of black, so one day when I wear something that's black, then I'll take out 
the Ven Ventura. Here is a swatch irony. I got this watch when I was a kid. I love this watch. This was kind of like when I started to move out of like the Michael Kors and like designer watches, I got into swatch first. I have a couple swatches, which I'll be showing you. And uh, so this is a swatch irony. Again, a chronograph blue dial. You're going to see a lot of that in my collection. If it has a blue dial and it's a chronograph, wrap it up. If, if it fits, it ships. That's, that is pretty much my motto. Another designer watch, Brooks Brothers. I just liked the, this look. It was rather dressy. Another chronograph. Does this one work? This one is ticking. Wow. So, so this one's still ticking. That is incredible. I don't think I've worn it in, I'm in years. But, you know, just a basic kind of... It has like a faux croc strap. Kind of a little more dressy. All right, this is a Nixon. It's called the Canon in gunmetal. Nixon's another company after I got out of like Brooks Brothers and Kenneth Cole, I got into Swatch and like Nixon. I'm a big shotgun shooter and I literally bought this watch because it's called gunmetal and it's called the Canon and I used to wear it shooting. Pretty simple, nothing too special. Just I bought it because of my enthusiasm for firearms and shooting. Here's another swatch. I bought this in Hawaii. Really cool watch. I liked it because for not a lot of money, it's uh, it's automatic movement. Faux croc strap. Yeah, check that out. Another chronograph. So, yeah. I got this one in Honolulu. At the swatch store in, in Honolulu. So, like I said, my Grail watch is the 5711 Nautilus for 65 bucks you can get a quote Nautilus played in knockoff again like with the big mic I was buying another watch and I saw this also on the website not very expensive and had to have it so when I want to feel like I'm wearing an almost two hundred thousand dollar I think I, I looked on chrono 24 the other day uh 5711s were like 130, 135. Now they're pushing 200,000. So for 65 bucks, you can have a similar look. This is a played in Nautilus in quotes. This is an interesting watch. This is a, a, a Chronoby Sweden. This is actually a smart watch. This connects to your phone and you can program it to tell you different things. It buzzes if you get. A text, it buzzes twice if you get a call, all kind of cool stuff. I used to use this for work because I had a very active job and I didn't want, even though I did eventually go to a digital smartwatch, which I'll show you here, I'm in a second, I'll show you that next. Uh, I wanted the watch look professional, but also buzz me because I was in sales. So if I got texts or calls from clients, I wanted to know so it used to buzz me in all of those things, but it still looked like a nice, dressy, professional watch. But eventually, as I got busier and busier, I switched to the Samsung Galaxy. And this is the original version. This is not the original strap. The original strap broke. Uh, this is just one I got, again, probably off of Amazon. And so I do have a Samsung uh, you know, just smartwatch. This is, I believe it's the Samsung Galaxy. I think this was like, like the first, the first like edition of the Samsung watch. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, I don't have a huge, you know, answer, oh, smartwatches aren't real watches. It's not horology, all that. Listen, you do you. I have, oh, I have almost 50 watches here. I believe you should collect what you like, get what you like. Uh, if you really like Seikos, buy Seikos. If you really like Rolexes, only buy Rolexes um, if you can afford it. You know, do what you want. I'm not I'm not like a snob, per se. I have one smart watch because for work at the time, it really helped me keep up with all my clients and all my sales. Uh, I think for horology, the thing I'd like to own is like a first edition Apple Watch. Just because it was like the first of its kind. And that would be cool from a horology a perspective, a collection a perspective. 
But if you like Apple Watches and you want to collect them and all that stuff, go ahead. You know, you can see I have a bunch of random stuff here. All right, this is a DIY watch. I built this watch. I built this watch, not the original strap. The original strap was black. On Amazon, I got this blue one to match the uh, blue dial. But I built this watch off of the, or from the DIY Watch Club. It was very difficult. It was very, very difficult. Getting the hands on was one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life. But it, in the end, though, when you wear this watch, if someone asks, hey, what kind of watch is that? You can say, I built it. So from the DIY Watch Club. So several years ago, like right now, green dials are in. Several years ago, black was in. So I went online, bought a, 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 an inexpensive um, Simon Carter London black leather strap, black dial, very simple. I just wanted to keep up with the trend at the time. And so that's why I bought this. Again, not all of my watches are expensive. A lot are rather inexpensive. Just to have follow trends, to have different looks for different outfits. Let's go God tier. Casio. This is the F91W. Every collector should have this Casio. Inexpensive. Go on Amazon right now. Pick it up if you don't have it. It's not going to break the budget. Go and, go and get it. Then, also God tier. Casio G-Shock. Inexpensive. Go to Amazon right now. Pick it up. You, you got to have it. Every collector should have Casio's G-Shock. The, um, the F91, F91W. I already showed you the uh, Pope watch. You know, Casio is... You got to have Casio. All right, where are we going next? Ah, probably not the greatest time to buy Russian watches, but any collector will know if you see one of these on someone's wrist, they know a little bit about watches. And that is the Vostok Scuba Dude. Russian watch. There it is. <laughs> Again, I got this off Amazon. I had to have the Scuba Dude. And then I also liked this one as well. So I bought another Vostok. They're not that expensive. So I bought two of them. So I forget what this one's called. I think Infantry something or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. But I bought two of these Vostoks. I wanted two different looks. The Scuba Dude is like the one that you should have if you want one of these. And then, But they have a bunch of different versions. I don't have a bracelet like this. And I liked this, this blue dial, obviously. So I thought I would pick this one up as well. And this one came with a Soviet pin, which, again, this time in history, 2022, probably not the most patriotic thing to do for an American, but, you know, I'm a watch collector, so it's a little bit of um, horological history. Okay, so <laughs> I discovered this company called Pin Time on Amazon. I don't have $2 million to buy an RM. So I bought a $30 one. This company's called Pin Time. They make these ridiculous knockoff watches that look like, you know, a million bucks. They come with these fake diamonds. They come without the fake diamonds. I they're just they're only $30, 35 bucks. I I picked up a few cuz I thought they were hysterical. Uh there's one of them. Here's another one. Again, I decided to get like the whole like like tricked out versions. This one I really like. This, I mean, it's a really nice strap. But again, 35 bucks, cheap. Looks like a million bucks. This one is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Look at this. All iced out, chandelier, all fake, $35. Just totally dumb. I don't even know what I'm doing. And then again, this, now those three were pin time. This cheap brand called Mini Focus. You can also find this on Amazon. Kind of has that royal oak look. And, you know, again, 30 35 bucks. I bought these also because I was kind of curious what a $35 watch feels like, looks like. You know, what you can get away with if you want to have a certain look, but it'd be very, very cheap. Here's another Nixon. Huge case. I exchanged. This is a, a new uh, leather um, strap. 
for this watch, the other one deteriorated. I actually took this watch apart. It does not work. It does not have a battery in it. But I've always liked this watch. This is a watch because I put the new strap on that I might get a new battery in. Because even though it's a Nixon and I have other watches that I could wear, as you'll see, I don't know. I just always have liked it. I like the huge dial, the huge diameter. So there's another Nixon. All right, let's see here. All right, now we're going to get into slightly vintage. These are my father's watches. He passed away. This is a Rado Diastar. This is from the 80s, I believe. High-tech ceramic. I tried to get this watch fixed. It ticked for a little bit. Now, fixed meaning put a battery in it. It worked for a little bit, but no longer works. They said they'd have to send it back to Switzerland. This watch is too special to me to get lost over in Europe. So it's really just a memory of my father. And it's a very unique piece. Very 80s. Also one of my father's watches from, I believe, the 80s. Is a Hoyer 2000. Not a Tag Hoyer. But a Hoyer 2000 before Tag came along. Again, does this one work? No, it's a chronograph. Well, the chronograph is, is ticking. So this one does work. I had the battery changed. And so, yeah. there Or the, the, the second hand. You know, one of the sub-dials. Is the, the, the top one. That is ticking. So this one does work. Again... It was my father's. He passed away. It's a huge keepsake watch. I rarely, if ever, wear it. It's more to have a piece of something that he had. Another Michael Kors. Chronograph, second hand, is not ticking. Again, very similar to that Brooks Brothers one that I showed you earlier. You know, something from when I was younger and couldn't afford more expensive watches. And here is a Michael Kors. Is it ticking? Nope, not working. But you know, it's a chronograph, so you know if, they, if it has subdials, I have to buy it. I love subdials. Another Michael Kors, subdials. Oh, lost the watch. Stay. More subdials. Look at that one. I like that. None of these work. Not a lot of these actually function. But that's not the point. I have them, and I don't want to get rid of them. I don't know what to even do with them. I mean, if I donated them, I'd have to get them working, right? So do I want to put in the money to get them working? Not, not really. So are we done with the drawer? Yeah, we are done with the drawer. All right, let's move up to the winder. So let's start right here. A Movado Two-Tone Museum. This was a gift from my mom. I have no idea if this watch works. Because it doesn't have a second hand. And I don't pay attention enough to know if this is actually going around. But I, it's very dressy. I wear this maybe occasionally if I'm getting like a, like a dressed up a bit. But yeah, it's a nice watch. Shinola Runwell. Another gift from my mom. That is a theme. Blue dial chronograph. This is not the original strap. The leather strap for this one broke. And I just ordered, and they're in, but once I get over the uh, coronavirus, once I'm able to leave, I got two new straps, Shinola straps, for this watch. I got an orange rubber one to match the orange accents in the uh, second hand and the chronograph hands, and I got a brown leather one to replace the brown leather one that deteriorated. I love Shinola. I love, th like, this is like me in a watch. It's just beautiful. Love it. Next to that is a Hamilton khaki automatic I, I bought this watch in new york the same place i bought that old tso prx this is not the original strap that one deteriorated this is a new strap um when i saw that i could get an automatic watch for 500 bucks i said wrap it up and that's why i bought it because i love automatic watches and i like affordable watches so that's a hamilton and hamilton's a great watch brand Teddy Baldazar introduced me to Orient, so I had to have an Orient watch. Guys, these are really nice watches for not a lot of money. 
I don't have a sun and moon watch. So when I went on Teddy's website to look at Orient, I got subdial sun and moon, beautiful leather faux croc strap. Orient, I believe Orient watches are affordable and they're really beautiful. I definitely want to get a couple more, but that was the first one that I bought. Beautiful Orient watch. So I'm a huge Formula One fan. And Tag Heuer is a sponsor for the Red Bull team. So obviously I had to have the Tag Heuer Formula One Red Bull watch. Now this still, does this say, this still says Aston Martin on it. Now Aston Martin has their own team now. So the, the title sponsor for Red Bull is now Oracle. So this was still when, but guys, I'm not, this was like 1100 bucks or 1500 bucks, something like that. I mean, I'm not going to get a new one every time they uh, change sponsors, but I wanted the Tag Heuer Formula One Red Bull Racing Watch. And that is quartz movement. I'm a huge Breitling fan, and I really wanted, when it came out, the Breitling Endurance Pro. Around $3,000 for this watch. Relatively inexpensive. It is super quartz compared to other Breitlings. I wanted the blue, but they didn't have the blue in stock. And basically, I'm in Pittsburgh, black and yellow. Yellow is Breitling's color. After talking to the salesperson, who obviously wanted to sell a watch, they talked me into getting the yellow one, even though I wanted the blue one. But you see, blue is well represented in my collection. So I thought with the Endurance Pro, I'll do something different and get Breitling yellow and Pittsburgh black and gold. Now, I was at a watch event, and they had a Breitling rep, and we were talking, and I was looking in the case, and I said, what's that? And she goes, that's a Breitling Sky Racer. And I said, how much is that? She goes, 1100 bucks. I said, excuse me, $1,100 for a Breitling? She goes, yeah, it's our Super Quartz, and we're trying to compete with, like, Tag Heuer. And I was like, wrap it up. 1100 bucks to have a Breitling on your wrist? Why not? Got to pick that up. Faux show. Let me get this back going here. All right, so let's get into some bigger boys. Let's get into some bigger boys up here in the winder. This is a Panzera. Panzera is a watch manufacturer from Australia. This is the TM42. Again, I love motorsport. This is their motorsport watch. They have pilot's watch, or pilot's watches, motorsport watches, and um, like diving, like ocean wa watches. I loved the holes. That's like a very like big like racing thing. I also, let me see if I have it here, quick. I also bought, since it came all the way from Australia, a blue Panzer strap as well, because I love blue. So I got that as well, so I can switch it out if I want. It has, you know, an easy... You can see it there. See that little thing there? You can easily switch the straps in and out. This is an automatic movement watch. Guys, I want to say these watches, they're 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 under a thousand. I want to say this was five, six hundred bucks. But I think they they were having a sale or something, so I, I got a deal on it. I love this watch. I love their watches. I was looking at their website last night, actually. I think I want to get one of their um, diving watches. Panzera, check them out. Australia, gorgeous watch, the holes. Oh, it's such a cool look. Plus, you can get multiple straps. And I just ordered on Amazon a fake croc, blue croc strap for this. Panzera sells one, but I got a cheap one off Amazon. I'm going to see if I like how the croc looks on it. And if I like it, then I'm going to get the $80 Panzera one from Australia. So I have now three straps. Guys, now that these watches, these, these manufacturers are putting in these easy switch out straps, get multiple straps. Buy one watch, three straps, you have three different looks. I mean, guys, it's like a no, no brainer. All right, I just purchased this from Teddy Balduzar. I like to give him business when I can. Uh, I like to, you know, not always get things right from Tissot or whatever, um, I, I'm going to show you a watch, a very, a rather expensive watch here in a little bit that I could have bought from the manufacturer, but I went to my local jewelry store, watch store, and bought it from them. 
This is a brand new Tissot Sea Star. When I saw this watch, I was being bombarded with ads on my Instagram. I just had to have it. Automatic, just gorgeous. Look at that beautiful blue dial. Black case, synthetic and rubber strap. Now, it says it's waterproof, but there is leather here. So I don't know, obviously this is waterproof. The strap, however, I'm not really sure. If you go on the website, they talk about how this is a waterproof watch. So I don't know, but you can get, hey, again, it's, it's, the, quick, it's the quick release. You can get a rubber strap for it, whether it's from Tissot or Horace or Rubber B or whatever, something that's obviously waterproof. Switch it out if you're not sure, but guess what? I'm not a diver. I like watches because how they look. This watch is never going to go underwater. Even if I'm at the ocean, I'm going to leave it in the in the um, hotel room or whatever. I'm not a diver. I just love the look of this watch. It's a beautiful blue dial with the waves. It goes from blue to black around the edges. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this Sea Star. I just I just absolutely love it. Okay, we're going to go to Cuba. A cuervo y sobrinos robusto. Look at that domed crystal. Is that not cool? Um, this is probably the only pre-owned watch I've ever purchased. I don't like buying pre-owned watches. I like to buy watches new. I think I don't like knowing that it was on someone else's wrist. I'm weird about that. Now, obviously, if I wanted to get something like a Hulk or a Panda, something you know, unique, something that's hard to get, pre-owned might be the only way to go. So at that point, you know, I'm getting it because I want to say that I, I own a Hulk, if someone else wore it, whatever. But when the guy at the watch store brought this out, it was, so each one of these watches come in their own humidor, which I can't show you right now because it's tucked away in my closet, but a real full-size humidor, I could tell by how the watch looked no creases in the band that the guy who owned this never wore it. So that's why I bought it. I, it's a really cool watch. Again, that that domed crystal is just awesome. Cuervo y Sobrinos, if you've never heard of it. It is a Cuban uh, watch manufacturer. So this is the Robusto. You know what? I'm not going to pronounce. try to pronounce the name. That's inside here. A, a buchador? Busador? Sorry, I probably butchered that. All right. At the same time that I bought the Cuervo y Sobrinos, I bought this U-Boat Classico. Love U-Boat. Look at that case. Oh, my God. Look at that thing. Italian watch manufacturer. I love this U-Boat. This is such a cool watch. Notice that because of its large size, the crown is to the out the uh, inside of the wrist on this side, and you unscrew it to get to the crown. Awesome! Oh, this is such a cool watch. Look at that! I love U boats. And my local watch guy stopped selling them. I would love to have more. I love U boats, but. I also like, as you can see, I like to collect different uh, ma manufacturers. Yeah, I do have a few Breitlings, because that's my favorite watch manufacturer, but I have a U-Boat. So if I have a few grand to spend, I'm probably not going to buy another U-Boat, because I have one, unless it's like super special. But you, you just never know. Okay, let's go to this one. This is probably my favorite watch. This is a Breitling Bentley Motors. This is the first serious watch I acquired. I absolutely love, love, love this timepiece. Again, what is it, guys? Chronograph with a blue dial. I'm kind of basic in that way. Speed bracelet, absolutely gorgeous. Rarely wear it. I just love looking at it. Okay, let's see here. 
All right, this is a Ulysse Narden executive dual time croc strap. Very dressy, very nice, gorgeous watch. Rarely wear it because, again, I don't wear a lot of black, and it's just super dressy, but it's so beautiful. The Breitling was a gift from my mother. This was a gift from my mother. I will never, she's also passed away. I will never get rid of these watches. Even if I never wear this watch, it's just super special to me. My father's watches, the ones my mother bought me for special occasions, uh, for accomplishments, um, just really a beautiful, beautiful timepiece. Again, that the, the watch guy near me stopped selling these as well. And they're just absolutely wonderful pieces. Okay. Guys, everyone's got to have a Rolex. So I got myself a Datejust fluted bezel, Jubilee bracelet, two-tone. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, uh, God tier. You got to have yourself a Rolex. All right, I think we got one more. My most recent purchase. The Cartier Santos Special Edition Blue Dial. You have the metal bracelet and you have the blue leather bracelet. Comes with both. And it has this really cool, you can see inside there that gray bar you simply press that in. I don't know if I can do it right now. I don't know if I want to mess up. Yeah, there it is. Press it in, pull it out. Extremely easy to exchange the bracelets and straps for this watch. So when I bought the Rolex, the lady I bought it from said, Michael, I think you're going to like this watch. And she showed me this. And I said, oh, I, the, the dial, the dial is stunning, absolutely stunning. And I'm like, I'm going to own this watch. I will own it. I'm going to own it. It took about another year after I bought this. So what I do is this. If I like a watch, right, and it's a major purchase, not, not one of these $30 pin times, right, these like cheapos, a major purchase. I say to myself, in a month from now, if I'm still thinking about it, it's under consideration. Two months, three months, four months. A year later, I was still enamored with this beautiful watch. And you have to have a Santos. Look it up. What was the first men's wristwatch? The Cartier Santos. So you got to have one. So a year later, I still wanted it. So I went out and I made it happen. Now, guys, I believe I've gone through, if you've been counting, keeping up at home, 49 timepieces. It's incredible. And it took me what? Almost 40 minutes. Well, guess what, guys? Yesterday in the mail, there's something behind here. Number 50 arrived in the mail. It's a G-Shock. But I'm not going to unveil it here. Watch number 50 has arrived. There's going to be another video coming out where I unbox watch number 50. Obviously, it's another Casio God tier. G-Shock. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit the bell. Go to tmpspodcast.com. Um, what I'll do is I'll put, you know, maybe some links to these watches if you're interested, you know, like the PRXs and the Arnie and the Cartier and the Breitlings. Maybe I'll put some links in the description. My website will be in the, um, in, uh, in the, in the description. Please check out my podcast. Again, on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, and I try to upload it to YouTube as well. And uh, again, I'm going to have a video unboxing my number 50 uh, G-Shock. And I'm going to have a lot more watch content. So please check in, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.